Good day. So in this presentation, we're going to discuss parasitic diseases and pests. Our members, Dandan, Deliota, Facundi, Facundi, Gaerlan, Maglalang, Magnase, Manabat, Santiago, and Siblawan. So in this presentation, we're going to discuss parasitic animals of significance to aquaculture and their harmful effects on fish and crustaceans. Illustrations on the life cycle of major parasites. And also, we're going to discuss methods in diagnosing diseases caused by parasites, including disease prevention and control, parasitic diseases in aquaculture, aquaculture environment that are suitable for the growth and reproduction of cultured animals are also hospitable to potential diseases agents such as parasites it is no wonder then that fish mortalities and abnormalities associated with parasites as disease agents are well documented indicating their importance in aquaculture the study of parasites involves an understanding of certain existing relationships in a particular population. We have here symbiotic relationships occurring on our aquaculture organisms. Symbiosis or living together is a relationship that benefits one or both parties. First, we have mutualism. Both organisms here benefit each other. Second, commensalism. One organism here benefits and one organism is unaffected. Third is parasitism. One organism here benefits and one organism is harmed. Here are examples of mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Under mutualism, as you can see below the picture, is a coral and a herbivorous fish, which is we know the Nemo. The coral here provides shelter for the Nemo fish, and then in return, these herbivorous fish, Nemo, protects the coral from natural enemies such as seaweeds. In this case, both organisms benefit. Under commensalism, a good example here is a picture of a shark and remora fishes. Remoras eat scraps of prey dropped by the shark. When sharks eat the uh, scraps dropped by the shark while uh, after a while they are eating, you know? are being eaten by these remoras. These remoras also feed off parasites on shark's skin and its mouth. In this case, remoras benefit while the sharks are being unharmed. Under parasitism, as you can see on the picture, is a parasite living on the tongue of a fish. This means one organism benefits while the other organism is being harmed. I hope you understand the relationship between the three. And endoparasites. Ectoparasites are outside the body of the fish. They live on the skins, fins, and gills of the host fish. While endoparasites are seen inside the body of a fish. They are seen on the internal organs, especially. So here are the examples of ectoparasites and endoparasites. In ectoparasites or external parasites, we have here Ichopterius multifilis, which causes the white spot disease in fin fishes. This disease is a holterious ciliate that has a worldwide distribution and affects all freshwater fishes. A closely related organism is Cryptocarion irritans, which affects the marine fishes. Next, we have the uh, endoparasites or internal parasites. Example is the microsporogiosis, 
This is caused by the microsporidia, also known as the white ovary disease. Microsporidia are spore-forming unicellular parasites related to fungi. More than 1,000 species have been described, mainly infecting invertebrates and fishes. There are two categories in the life cycles of parasites. First, we have direct or monocenous life cycle. And second is the indirect or heterocenous life cycle. In direct life cycle, only one host is needed to complete the parasite's life cycle. In indirect or heterocenous life cycle, the parasites utilize more than one host to complete its life cycle. Intermediate host, final host, and carrier or paratenic host are three different kinds of host. In intermediate host, this is a host where the larval stage of the parasite usually develop. In the final host, the host where the adult state of the parasite develops. Note that the final host often feed on the intermediate host. Lastly, the carrier or the paratenic host, the parasite stay in this host but do not develop in them. In host-specific parasitism, a parasite can only infect one or a limited number of host species. In tissue organ-specific parasites, the parasites only infect a particular tissue or organ. Note that uh, understanding of parasites' life cycle patterns is useful in disease prevention since the parasite may be eliminated at the weakest point of its life, which is when they are free swimming in the water. Protozoans have direct life cycles, which means only one host is needed to complete their life cycle. At the infective stages, they are released into the water to infect the same host or spread throughout the fish population. Its duration only lasts 4 to 9 days. An example is the Ichthyrius multipilis and its marine counterpart, Cryptocarion irritans. Monogeneans also have direct life cycle. Their eggs hatch into free swimming ciliated larvae called Oncomira sedium. Their eggs also hatch in 2 to 6 days duration at 30 degrees and 30 parts per thousand salinity. Their life cycle lasts 13 to 20 days with exemption in Gyrodactylid, which bears live young. Their infection among fish happens through physical contact. We have here Digenian. Digenian have indirect life cycle. They are oviparous, hatched as free swimming larvae called Miracidium. They can only survive for a few hours during which they must find and infect an intermediate host. First, intermediate host is gastropod or bivalve mollusk Cercariae, and second intermediate host is fin fish Meta Cercariae. Their duration is only for a few weeks or a few months after they infected a host. So as you can see on this uh, life cycle, from adult digenian in fish, as you can see there on the top, it will lay eggs and then eggs will be hatched as free swimming microcidium and then after that they will invade molluscan intermediate host. After that, Cercariae will be released from the molluscan host and then they will insist in fish intermediate host. After that, they will be eaten by the final host again by the adults. And the cycle just repeats. Nematodes they can be direct or indirect depending on the species. They are oviparous, eggs hatch into free swimming larvae, and their duration is several months after infecting a host. So, as you can see on their uh, life cycle, the adult nematode in fish lays egg and hatch and released as free swimming larvae 
and then larvae will be eaten by invertebrates as their intermediate host and then further larval development occur in invertebrates host after that larvae and cysts in fish will be an infective larvae eaten by the final host again the adult fish and then the life cycle repeats copepods can be direct life cycle they hatch as free living planktonic nopleus stage free swimming infective stages attach chalimus per adults and adult stages their duration is only 15 days you can see in their life cycle adult copy pods attached to fish final host and then their eggs laid by adults and released as no filly larvae and then larvae molt to produce free swimming no pillar stages after that further molts produced they may be free swimming and then some are all copepod stages may be parasitic on a fish intermediate host but some are young adults attached to the fish final host it either of the two and then final host again attached to the fish the life cycle repeats parasitic infections protozoan infestations protozoans are unicellular microscopic organisms with specialized structures for locomotion uh, food gathering and also attachment and prote protection so they have a specialized structure no they used for movement and everything they can multiply on or within their host uh, major protozoans parasites are ciliates flagellates and sporozoans we have here first the ciliates protozoans with short fine cytoplasmic outgrowths called cilia as locomotor organelle either attached or motile and are mainly ectoparasitic meaning they are found inside the fish no? examples are ichthyotherius cryptocarion irritans the trico trichodinids or trichodina spp trichodinella spp and tripartiella spp and brooklynella spp flagellates are protozoans that have one or more long hair-like structure called flagella used as locomotory organelle flagellate infections occur on skin gills intestinal organs and blood of fishes examples of flagellates are amyloidinium oscillatum ichthyobodo species and the blood protozoans trypatorosoma species and cryptopia species mixosporian under sporozoans are microscopic multicellular organism composed of several spore shell valves these parasites infect organ cavities and tissues of fishes. They cannot survive outside the host, and their spore with about 7 to 20 micrometer in size is their infective stages, and is composed of 1 to 7 spore shell valves, 1 to 2 sporoplasms, and 2 to 7 polar capsules. Still under sporozoan are microsporidian, or also called microsporian. They are intracellular obligate parasites with unicellular spore containing sporoplasm and coiled polar filament. They no longer considered as protozoan but as highly derived fungi but they are often grouped with protozoa in practical text. In parasitic infections, monogenians are ectoparasitic flatworms with length of 1 to 6 mm with a posterior organ of attachment called haftor, armed with hooks and suckers. Skin monogenians are capsulid patworms, oval in shape, and are 2 to 6 mm long. They are attached on the body surface of the fish.
In parasitic infection of Digenaeans, they are mostly endoparasitic. They are platforms measuring about 1 to 2.6 by 0.2 to 0.8 mm with two sucker-like attachment organs located at the anterior and ventral portion. The dimosoid Digenaeans are parasites on the gills of fish and are extremely long and may reach up to 80 centimeters. Examples are Bucephalus species, Lesutocherium species, Pseudomedadena species, Transversotrema species, Estelachatmus species, Haplorchis species, Procerovum species, Prosorhynchus species, Hemurus species, Gonapodasmus epinephali, and Gauhatiana species. We have here nematode infestation. This is also parasitic infections. You know? uh, nematode infestation, commonly known as roundworms. These are roundworms. You know? Internal parasites with unsegmented bodies. Usually, they are 1 to 2 cm long. And adult stage is big enough to be seen by the naked eye. Examples are... Philometra species, Anisakis species, Procamalianus species, Spiromalianus species, Raphidascaris species, Contrasecium species, and Echinocephalus species. Ichthyophtriasis, Cryptocaryonosis or the what we call white spot disease so causative agents of this white spot disease are freshwater ichthyophytriasis multifilis which is the multifilis uh, and its marine counterpart is the sea irritants so as you can see here on the picture we have the Ichthyophytrius multifilis. So, this is a mature from the skin of a catfish, Clarias macrocephalus, with its characteristics horseshoe shaped. As you can see on the picture, it looks like a horseshoe. Its counterpart is the Cryptocarion irritans. It was got from the gills of humpback grouper. The uh, species affected by this uh, multifilis species is freshwater catfish, carp, and tilapia. Since this uh, parasite lives on the freshwater, it also affects freshwater species. So there you go. And its counterpart, uh, the uh, marine irritants, uh, they affect sea bass, grouper, and snapper. What are the effects on the host of these uh, parasites? They can cause severe epizootic, especially in intensive culture systems. Uh, parasite may destroy the skin and gills, and ulcers may develop on the skin. Of heavily infected fish I'm oh, sorry ulcerations okay the mode of transmission of this uh, parasites is horizontally from infected fish to the water and then to the infected fish again so it's just cycling what are the gross signs of this parasites disease you know? Uh, the presence of a few to numerous whitish or grayish spot on the skin and gills of affected fish. Uh, deceased fish lost their appetite, uh, lethargic with abnormal swimming behavior, darkened body, hemorrhages on the body surface, and opaque or hemorrhagic exophthalmic eyes. Uh, heavily infected fish show respiratory distress and produces a lot of mucus uh, erosion of the skin may result in ulcerations susceptible to secondary infections so as you can see from the picture ano, you can see white spots on the fish eyes skin so 
that's for multifillers and irritants. In prevention and control for E or ectopteriasis, cryptocaryonosis, or white spot disease, consider to increase water temperature to 30 degrees Celsius for 6 hours daily for 3 to 5 days. Treatment with 0.5 salt solution or 100 parts per million formalin for 1 hour for 2 to 3 days or 25 parts per million formalin plus 0.1 parts per million malachite green. To prevent and control the cryptocarion irritants, consider making a fresh water bath for 1 hour for 2 to 3 days or a combination of 0.5 parts per million or 0.5 milligrams per liter of copper sulfate and 25 parts per million or 25 milligrams per liter of formalin for 5 to 7 days supplied with a strong aeration. Treated water must change daily and the infected fish must isolate or transferred in parasite-free tanks for two to three times at three-day interval. Microsporidiosis or white-gray ovary disease is caused by microsporidian intracellular parasites namely Nosema species or Amazon, Agmasona species or Telohania, Pleistophora species, Glugia species, and Ichthyosporidium. Microsporidiosis happens mostly on crustaceans such as shrimp and crabs. Symptoms include turning opaque white of infected parts. In effect, infected pennies that have spores in the ovaries become sterile or infertile. Infected crabs have lysis on their muscle tissues and eventually increase vulnerability to stress. Microsporidiosis mode of transmission may be horizontal or vertical or combination of both. Diagnosis includes microscopic examination of fresh squashes of gemsa or malachite green stained and smears from infected areas will reveal spore. Microsporidiosis provide positive identification in histological sections. Prevention and control of microsporidiosis has no known treatment in shrimps, but we can provide preventive methods like isolation and destroying infected individuals, avoiding contact of infected broodstock with offspring, and disinfection of culture system with chlorine and iodine. Hi, thank you for watching our video. We are the group 1 from BSF 3-1. I am Vladimir Dandan and here is my co-narrator. I am Mary Jean Manabat and of course, we will not be able to complete this presentation without the help of our team. May we introduce them to you. Our researchers who gathered the necessary data used in this presentation. I am Lailani Siblawan. I am Borjaliala Ansi Fakun. Hi, I am Cherry Jane Santiago. And I am Jennifer Mercado. And of course, with the help of our audiovisual team. Hello, I am Emery Feliz Sigarlan and I was in charge of summarizing all of the needed info from the researchers and creating a script. Hi, I am Ryan Deliota and I gathered the pictures and background audio for this video. Hi! I am Daniel Fakud and I made this PowerPoint presentation by using the script as guide. And of course, our editors! Hello, I'm Patricia Demir I. Magnase. I was the person to gather all the files needed and did the preliminary editing for this video. Hello, my name is Erickson Magdalang and I did the polishing edit for this video. Thank you for listening and we hope you learned something.